going to start today by revealing our region's most intriguing person for 2014. But first, we need to take a step back in time. Around 2008, our community was really suffering. Other communities were hurting too, but you could really see our losses here. Our economy was going downhill, and you just started seeing more empty spaces where there were once crowds. Over the next few years, we sometimes thought we saw better times ahead, but often that just ended in disappointment. But this year, a proven winner landed on our shores, someone who has the ability to bring us national recognition and make us feel like winners again. I am, of course, talking about basketball and the hiring by UNCW this year of Kevin Keats as our new basketball coach. Keats most recently served as an assistant for Louisville coach Rick Pitino. During Keats's time there, Louisville reached the Final Four twice and won the national championship in 2013. Patino called Keats one of the best assistants I have had in my long career. ESPN's Jeff Gordon named Keats as the nation's third most respected and feared assistant coach in 2013. Keats was previously head coach at Hargrave Military Academy, where he had a record of 263 wins, only 17 losses, and two national championships. He also previously coached at Marshall and Southwestern Michigan College. So far this season, UNCW is 3-2 and, and just recorded its most lopsided victory in school history, beating St. Andrews 105-47. to On Sunday, Keats will return to Louisville to take on Rick Pitino and his old team, which is currently ranked fourth in the country. The game will be televised on ESPNU. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Wilmington's most intriguing person for 2014, Coach Kevin Keats. I'd like to thank Rob and his staff for obviously giving me this opportunity. Um, Rob is, um, I just met him and um, I liked him a lot. Now I don't know if I like him because he just told you guys we're going to get our butt beat on ESPN at 6 o'clock. <laughs> um, I, I had a chance last night to listen to Jimmy V. And, and I've heard that speech a million times, a million times. And he said, you know, you should laugh every day. And that's true. He said, you should think every day. And then you should move your emotion to crying every day. And, and so far this morning, I've had all of those emotions. I'll tell you why. My good friend, Bill Riddlesel, he didn't want me to say this, but just told me if we win a national championship, he's going to pledge $500,000. So I'm emotional. Thanks, Bill, for that. <laughs> what I want to talk to you guys about today is pulling a group of people together for a common goal. And I want to talk about my experiences, uh, obviously, at Louisville and winning the national championship. Ours is a little different. I know you guys are, everybody's got a different business. But my first year at Louisville, we took a team that wasn't very good, and we went to the Final Four. And, you know, I'm thinking to myself, this is my first opportunity being a um, high major assistant coach. How lucky am I? I get to go, I'm working for Rick Bettino, he's a Hall of Fame guy. My first time as a high major assistant, I get a chance to go to the Final Four. I'm excited. We got there and we were satisfied, we lost. And that next year, we got our whole team together. And we said, well, what's your goals for this year? Obviously, you went to the Final Four, what's your goals for this year? And we said, well, the only goals that we can have is, we gotta win it all. We gotta win a national championship. If we don't win a national championship, the season's a failure. So we got every kid to write out their goals, personal, uh, what they wanted as a team, what they were looking for, educational. And everybody, every kid from top to bottom said, we're going to win a national championship. So obviously, as a coach, when you hear that at the beginning of the year, you're saying, yeah, right. The odds of you going back to a Final Four again is, is very slim. The odds of you having an opportunity to win a national championship is very slim. So... I want to talk about the last three games leading up to the national championship. So, any Duke fans in here? Raise your hand. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I, I understand. It's okay. I want to talk about, so, we're in the Elite Eight. And, you know, we end up, when you go through the selection committee, you know, you sit there and you say, all right, where are we going to be picked? So, we ended up being number one and number one which means we were the number one seed. 
I looked at the bracket and I'm like, oh my goodness, we're the number one seed over number one and we got Duke in our bracket, we got Wichita State in our bracket and we have the opportunity to play Michigan. I was like, we got screwed. How in the world can that happen? We can't do that. So I want to talk about the Duke game. And when I talk about Duke game, a bunch of numbers just stick out in my mind. You know, I think about March 31st. I think about 21 to 20. I think about 633. I think about 85 to 63. Now, to you guys, those numbers don't mean anything. To me, it means everything, okay? We're playing and, you know, we're on an elevated court and the court is this high and the team is this low. And I get emotional sometimes when I talk about this. Kevin Ware, he goes up, 6.33 on the clock, and he challenges a shot. And I'm sitting on the bench. I'm sitting where you guys were. And he goes up, he challenges a shot. I look down the court. I look this way. I look there. And something strange was happening, something that I've never seen in my lifetime. Okay, something strange. So I look back. And then all of a sudden, I saw all of our guys just full of emotion. Well, some of you guys may not know the story. Some of you guys may. Okay, obviously, Kevin Ware broke his leg in that game. And it was one of the most emotional things that any human being could see in their life. You know, I'm thinking to myself, you know, as humans, you never should see a bone outside of somebody's body. And with Kevin Ware, his bone was about six inches out of his leg. And if you were looking at it on TV or you were sitting high, you didn't know what happened. You thought maybe a sniper was in the building because the way our kids reacted and the way they fell. It was, it was one of the toughest things that I've ever see, had to see as a coach. I tell you the story because at that moment, you have to find a way to pull yourself together. Okay, and in your businesses, a lot of things happen. Sometimes the account that you want, sometimes the things that you're doing is not going well, and you got to find a way to pick the pieces up. Okay, and, and you, can, you can either lay down or you could say, we're going to find a way. I tell you this story because Kevin Ware, during his time of struggles, he's laying on the floor. His bone is outside his body. He's got a compound fracture. And all the young man could say was, Win the game. Just win the game. And I'm thinking to myself, at, at, at that time, I'm 40 years old, and I'm thinking to myself, how can a young man be that strong? Because at 40 years old, I wouldn't be able to do that. So all of his teammates huddle around him. We luckily go into halftime up to, I have no idea how. Coach. Latino is a magician. He does a great job of getting these guys ready to play. And our message became, get Kevin Ware home. Kevin Ware was from Atlanta, Georgia. Get him home. We had to go back to the Final Four. Do this for Kevin Ware. Do this for Kevin Ware. And I'm telling you now, the emotion that our guys played with because they wanted Kevin Ware to get back home and have an opportunity to win a national championship was unbelievable. And so what I tell you guys is when you try to pull people together and you work extremely hard and you achieve all the goals that you want, it makes you feel good. Because if we could rally around Kevin Ware, one of our own brothers, and have an opportunity to beat a great Duke team, not a good team, but a great team to make it to the Final Four, then we all can do that as a team and, and whatever team that you're on. So. I was shocked because I never thought that the emotions of what happened, those guys could rally and win the game. And we actually ended up winning the game by 22 points because we wanted to do it for Kevin Ware. So fast forward, and we go and we play Wichita State. We're in the Final Four. And I got to be honest with you. Is there any Wichita State guys in here? <laughs> if it is, I want to see you. <laughs> I got to be really, really honest with you. Wichita State, I had no respect for them. I mean, I'm, I'm guilty. Great program. Great friend of mine, Greg Marshall, he's a head coach there. He's done a tremendous job. He was at Winthrop. He turned the program around. 
He won like eight conference championships. He's a coach at Wichita State. They're always good. But my arrogance, my arrogance because I'm at University of Louisville and I'm the associate head coach and I'm, I have no respect for Wichita State. I don't think they're very good. So we go into the game. And Wichita State is absolutely kicking our butt. And I'm sitting there like, God, this is the group I watched on tape. Not very good. I don't know where they're beating us like that. I tell you this story about Wichita State because in your business, in sports, you never know who's going to be the likely hero. So we're down by 12. And we put a guy in a game named Tim Henderson. Now, none of you guys would know Tim Henderson. It doesn't mean anything to you. But around Louisville now, he's called Wichita Tim because he was so successful. The last time we played Tim Henderson, we put him in the game, he took a shot and hit the side of the backboard. He was so nervous. He, I tell you what, he ripped his pants off. We coached Tim. Tim, check in the game. Ripped his pants off, threw his pants on the floor, ran, slipped on his own pants, got in the game, and then he missed a shot. Nobody had a clue. <laughs> I say that because without Tim Henderson, Tim Henderson came in the game and he made two huge threes for us to get us back in the game. And we had an opportunity and we actually ended up winning the game. But sometimes you're sitting on the sideline. And as I tell my guys, sometimes you're sitting on the sideline, you don't think you're going to play. And if you're not mentally prepared to play or mentally prepared to do your job, then you're not going to be successful. And now Tim Henderson, he, he walks on water in Louisville. Whatever he wants, he can have. Okay? Tim came in the game. He obviously hit the two big threes. Um, obviously, we move on to the national championship game. Okay? National championship semifinals, I'm watching, and it's Michigan versus Syracuse. And I know there are some Syracuse people in there. got to be. One. Yeah, I like that. Any Michigan, two. Any Michigan. All right, I'm watching the game, and if Michigan win, it's going to be my scout. If Syracuse win, it'll be another assistant coach's scout on the, on the team. We just beat uh, Syracuse three times already that year. So I'm like, man, we, I, want, I, want, I want Syracuse so bad. We can beat them. They're a little intimidated by us. We got a chance to beat those guys. Well, of course, you guys know what happened. I'm not that lucky. So Michigan wins the game. So John Beeline, I don't know if you guys know John Beeline. He's one of the best coaches, I think, in the business. And um, he runs this complex offense, and he's extremely talented. Uh, they do a really good job. So it's my scout. I don't get a chance to sleep at all. You know, I was up all night long, and I'm trying to figure out because between the semifinals and the national championship game, you have one day to prepare for the team. You play on Saturday, you play the national championship game on Monday. So I'm saying to myself, how can I prepare 13 guys that play against John Beeline's offense in one day? I'm trying to figure it out. This is what I get paid for. I make a lot of money. This is what Coach Patino pays me for. You got to figure this out, Cap. So... Of course, I'm smart. I'm the associate head coach. I know what the heck I'm doing. So I walk in the coach's room the next morning and I say, Coach, I just don't feel like that we can prepare for Michigan in one day by playing them man to man. I think we should zone those guys. Really, Kev, why do you think that? I think we should zone them because and one day, I think we can prepare for their zone because their zone offense is not as complex as their man offense. Great, Cap. You believe that, we'll do it. Okay? So we get in the game. And, of course, we go zone. So they come down. They make a huge three against our zone. Okay, no big deal. It's the first play of the game. We come down, we miss a shot. They come down again. They make another three against our zone. I'm starting to feel a little uneasy at that point. <laughs> they got a national player of the year on that team, Trey Burke. 
Trey Burke ends up getting his second foul. I'm like, great, man. Trey Burke is out of the game. I'm so excited. There's no Trey Burke. They won't hit any more threes. So they put a little kid in named Spike Albridge. And I, you guys, you can Google Spike because he's having a good year now. But in coaching, when it's your scout before the game, you put all the personnel on the board. You say, here's their top eight, nine guys. You know, here's what they do. Uh, this is what we're trying to accomplish. And so Spike checks in the game, and Coach Patino, he's, he's standing above me like this, and we're down there, and he, he looks back and like, who is that kid? So I don't even have Spike on the board. <laughs> I have no idea who Spike is. I don't have him on the board at all. Spike comes in the game and says, Coach, don't worry about it. I'm flipping through notes. Uh, Spike, he averages one point a game. Coach, don't worry about it. He's fine. He, don't, he hasn't scored in the last eight games. Well, Spike came in the game, and Spike hit his first three. And I'm sitting there like that, and I'm in my chair, and I'm starting to get a little low in my chair, like, what the heck am I doing? So go down, we make a shot, and Spike comes down the floor again, and he makes another three. And I told Jimmy Bass, because Jimmy's warned me about this, um, I can't tell you the words that Coach Patino said to me, <laughs> but I can tell you the look. He turned, I, he turned around and he looked at me and he, he stared at me for about three minutes. The game's going on and I'm trying to, I mean, it's very un, you know, awkward. I'm looking the other way and he's staring at me and I'm, I'm like trying to look at the game and I'm porting here and I'm, and it was a tough deal for me, but at that point, I had to figure it out. And a lot of times, doing life, doing your business, doing sports, you got to figure it out. And so you know, I took my bashing from coach. I took my stare down from him. And all I could think at the time was, I've got a Hall of Fame coach who's 60 years old. He's been in the NBA. He's been at the Boston Celtics. He's been at the New York Knicks. He's got one national championship at Kentucky. This is his last opportunity possibly to get another, another national championship, and it's all on my shoulders. That's all kept running through my head. All kept running through my head. And so I decided to, I guess in butter terms, to man up and say, Coach, you have to get out of the zone. So he, I'm, I'm down there with you guys, and he's yelling at me, what? I was like, Coach, get out of the zone. He's like, what? Son, I can't hear you. Talk louder. And so I had to give him a couple choice words, too. Get out of the blank, blank zone. <laughs> and so he ended up getting out of the zone. Uh, we ended up winning the game. Uh, it was one of the best games to ever be played. Uh, I tell you my story because when you get a group of people together and you guys are committed to doing something, something special can happen to you, okay? When I put my staff together this year, I wanted to get three guys that I felt like they would all work together and they were all hungry and they all wanted to move on. I didn't want guys that were all about their self because in business, in athletics, if you put together one strong team, okay, you will be very successful. And that's the thing that I go by now. You know, I want team. You cannot do it by yourself. Bringing people together is the biggest thing that you can do. And I'm excited about my team here. You know, a lot of you guys have, um, I've met a lot of you guys, and a lot of you guys have talked about the early 2000s. And um, I agree with you. We were very good in 2000. I am very, I am convinced that we will get back to that level. I am working extremely hard to make that happen. I've got a tremendous administration that's going to get behind us. Um, but I will tell you this, I need you guys, because you guys are the leaders of Wilmington, I need you guys to get behind the program more and more. I, you know, I told a gentleman, a gentleman asked me, well, why don't you think people support the program as much? And I said, and this is where the team has to come in, I said, well, we've had some great coaches here. And I said, when uh, Jerry Wainwright was here, he was outstanding. He did a tremendous job.
But when Jerry left, people left with him. I said when Brad Brownell was here, he, car he carried on and he did a tremendous job. Well, people were upset because Brad left and some people left with him. And so on and so on and all the coaches that's been in the program. And what I want to tell you guys is if we're truly a team in Wilmington, don't worry about who the coach is. Come support the program. That's the main thing that I ask for you guys. So give us an opportunity. The kids are working hard. I'm extremely happy about the program. Uh, we're three and two. Uh, unfortunately, we got to go play the Lakers on Sunday, which, <laughs> which is Louisville. And um, I'm excited about it. It'll be a great opportunity for our kids to see. Uh, I really need you guys, if you have the opportunity, to come out, uh, you know, December 17th, uh, December 20th, in January when, you, when we open up the conference season because all of our students will be gone. And we need you guys to show up as much as you can. And um, I hope you drink a bunch of alcohol before you get there because I want everybody to be extremely hard. Good. So I want, to thank, uh, I want to thank Rob and his staff for giving me the opportunity. Uh, up until this morning, I think the only people that thought I was intriguing was my, uh, my wife and kids. But now I know everybody does. So thank you guys.